Okay, boys and girls, sports fans, Den here, JDOD. We're in London Village yet again. Sounds familiar, this room. <laughs> Anywho, today I'm with Vera Loftus, UK Managing Director. No CEOs in the UK, guys. <laughs> for Blue Wolf, Blue Wolf, right? Yes. Consulting operation, born in the cloud, lives in the cloud. That's what it does, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me how this is different to a traditional consulting organization. I think the cloud really hones in on the flexibility and the process that people need to go in order to adjust to kind of the ever-changing marketplace. And it really speaks to looking at my business and continually analyzing where I need to be with respect to my customer and how I'm engaging with them. And I think the process and the technology at this point in the cloud is allowing us to do that much quicker. Right. Now, in a typical um, consulting engagement, the organization will tend to be thinking, I have this problem, bring in whoever, names we will not mention, <laughs> and they will then come forward with a technology solution nine times out of ten. You have a different approach. We do. We do. So we often, and we have to educate our clients on this a lot, because people tend to be solving one problem when really they need to be thinking about another. And so when we actually engage with a client, we, we challenge them to say, what really do you want to get as an outcome of this implementation? Mm. Why are we doing this? How is this going to better engage our customers globally? Um, and a lot of times, it's really not what the project started out to be. And so it's really honing in on that strategy and how we're going to get to certain metrics that are going to actually show us some ROI on the back end. Okay, so give me an example, something that you've done maybe recently. Sure. So we actually had a client um, back about six months ago that came to us and they said, we really want to start this website. And we said, okay, not really sure what you mean there. Um, and they said, yes, we, we really want to engage with our customers in this website. And once we started to dial the onion back a little bit, we really understood that what they were trying to do was gain a competitive advantage. Their competitors were really pushing thought leadership out in the marketplace, and they were leveraging portal-type technology to do that. Mm. And so what we said is, okay, this is a great initiative. It's a great vision that we want to have a better engagement model mm. for our customers. Mm. What we really need to look at is what we're doing internally, how our employees are engaged, what the process is to make sure that we're thinking about the business holistically, and we're not going to put a website up that is enabling something that doesn't even exist. So we kind of took a step back and said, let's really look at how our employees engage with our customers, see what we can really add efficiency in, both technology and process, and then look to start to expose that externally and give people the forms and the format to, to start to talk that message to our customers, okay. but really taking a step back. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you, you have a, a very different model to the traditional consulting model, yeah. right? On the one hand, you, you absolutely must have the top-down buy-in because otherwise why are you there, right? Yeah. On the other hand, it sounds to me as though you, you're trying to spend time with people who have actually got to get things done. Is that right? Exactly, exactly. Right. A big part of our process is really focusing in on the employee piece. How are they engaged? What do they do on a daily basis? Where can we really add value, make them more efficient? Because what we found is the technology is there, it's great, you can enable it, but it really is that, it's an enabler. And so when you take that piece out of it, building a better relationship with your customer comes down to the people aspect of it. So how do we make your people better? And the only way to do that is to really get in at the ground level and start to understand what their day-to-day -day life looks like and how we can add technology and process enhancements that's going to make their job a little bit easier, more efficient, and ultimately impact that moment that they're sharing with the customer. And when you do that, do, does it turn out that people who may have originally engaged you, maybe at the top of the uh, company, find things out that they didn't know before? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We So this company that I was talking about earlier, the executive sponsor, after we went through this blueprinting process, he came back and he said, I really felt like we needed to do this, and I'm glad we did it. And to be honest, I was a little skeptical that we were going to talk about a bunch of processes that we didn't need to. He's like, but this was a completely different experience than I anticipated. He's like, we didn't know any of this. Mm -hmm. We had no idea that our service was getting managed out of Outlook folders. We had no idea the process enhancements that we could make right now, technology agnostic, that would really help our customers get better service immediately. Right, right. Okay. Cloud only. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's going to upset some people, but why? Why is it's that true. important? It's true. I mean, I think, again, going back to that idea of, of 
reevaluating our businesses on a constant basis and making sure that they're relevant in the marketplace mm -hmm. and that we're producing the best customer experience possible requires some type of flexible technology. If we're going to be reevaluating, do you mean that my <laughs> configurable? We won't mention it. <laughs> ERP is is not flexible enough today. Well, it's not as flexible as it needs to be, I'll say. Right, right, right. Okay, go on. So, so really it's around flexibility and the, the fact that business is changing at a, a far faster speed and people need to be able to respond to that, yeah? Yeah, and I think people struggle with that. They struggle with the idea that business is changing faster than it ever has and mm. therefore the technology really needs to match that and I think that's a big challenge for businesses today. How do they cope with the speed of change then in, in, in the kind of environments that you're developing for them? I think there's a couple of aspects of it. One is on the technology side a governance process and a framework. Right. And I think that's a big piece of what people underestimate in the beginning. Yeah. People say, okay, I'm going to implement this technology, I'm going to solve this problem. And when we really think about it longer term, what is the pace of innovation and what's the investment that I need to make sure that that gets implemented over time and okay. I continue to recognize value. I think the other piece is the change management piece. So making sure that you're very in tune to what your people are doing, the pace of innovation that they can really keep up with mm -hmm. and making sure that as we're changing this great technology and making all these enhancements, that it stays in line with what your employees need and what they expect. Okay, fine one to nail you on, because you mentioned the two words, change management. My <laughs> colleagues go, hell, Steve, no way. Multi-year engagement, <laughs> millions of dollars. We don't want to know. Tell me why it's relevant. Tell me how you solve that problem and ensure that the outcomes are worthwhile. I think the people piece is more important than any technology, right. and that's what we've really found is the best piece of technology isn't necessarily going to drive your business forward. It's making sure that you've engaged with people at a level that they understand how this is going to improve their lives, mm -hmm. what we expect them to do with it, and the outcomes that as a company we're going to produce. Mm -hmm. And without that, you'll see 90% of technology implementations fail. And so the reality is you have to get it in the hands of the users. You can't be scared to do that because as long as you're proving real value, people want it. People are longing for this stuff. They want to do a better job. And so if you can kind of prove that all along the way, those end users become your biggest advocate. And that's a lot easier in the cloud than it ever was with, with any on-prem solution, isn't it? Because you switch it on, thank you very much, and off you go. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Vera, lovely to meet you. You thank too. You so Thanks so much. much for having me. Boys and girls, you heard it here first. Thank you very much indeed.